What's up, y'all? You are listening to For the Artists, a podcast brought to you by Creative M Projects. I'm your host, Melissa Cherie. Of course, as always, I'm uber excited because I met a really cool person. I have uh, only spoken to this person like maybe for a total of like 15 minutes altogether, I think, since we've met. But let me tell you about this person, okay? She describes herself as an illustrator and a storyteller. But let me tell you, I'm sure there's way more to her than just those those two words. Tracy is her name, and she has spent more than 25 years of her life tearing her hair out in Hollywood as a television showrunner, writer, and director from bachelors and bachelorettes to deals and no deals from the littlest of people to the biggest of losers from millionaire matchmakers to long lost families from a-list celebs to d-list and beyond tracy has run the gamut she holds a ba in journalism and an med having studied the effects of autobiographical writing on urban youth she's been married for 34 years to her college sweetheart love okay my other hand is holding something i'd make the heart and that guy thank you tracy and that guy who called her the toddler savant so listen there's a lot more in her bio but if i tell all of that i will i I will let the cat out of the bag so i'm gonna let tracy share more of her story tracy welcome to the podcast thank you Glad to be with you, <laughs> Melissa. I love it. I love you already. I'm, I love your background, which will make more sense as people <laughs> hear more of your story. So, yeah, let's get into your story because you have a very fascinating, a very unique story. Where do you like to start when you tell your story? Let's let's go there. Well, um. I am, I, I call myself now, I am kind of a new artist. I didn't know I could draw until um, now it's been about four and a half years ago now. And I had always, I've always been creative and, and I'd been in television, as you said, for, you know, 25 plus years and um, being creative. And I, I am a writer by trade, if you will. I mean, I started writing, you know, poetry when I was in middle school. It was always the, you know, uh, this cute boy, you know, kind of stuff. But I'd always write poetry. And I come from a big background of complex PTSD and so like so many of us. And so writing was always my, my therapy. And I didn't, I always tried to draw and that, I just didn't have that skill set. And uh, then after, um, once I spent all this time in, in television and I was doing my last television show and that was, so that ended in 2019. And the stress from that show, I mean, I'd been through a lot of stress in all those years in, in TV and especially as a woman, I think on top of it. And um when I was doing this last show, the stress was just got really dark. And um, I started doodling on my desk calendar just to calm me down You know, the big Staples desk calendar. I had a bucket of flare markers, like the Staples generic flare markers next to me. And, and I was the executive producer and I could just shut my door. And instead of crying all day or, you know, screaming at people or killing people, I would just start to doodle like now I look at that doodle and I call it rage doodling you know what I might have a little version I do actually right here just to give a little illustration so this is the the greeting card version of it but imagine a big staples desk calendar and this is rage just Mm. I was so upset but doodling would calm me down and um I had no idea that from this rage that these trees were coming and it wasn't really until I stood back and as you mentioned in my introduction, my husband called me a toddler savant because I brought, I tore that desk calendar off and I brought it home and I put it on the refrigerator. And of course my husband knew what was going on at, at work. And I'm like, look what I did at work today, honey. Like I was crazy. Like I, I was just freaking losing it. And he goes, yeah, it looks like you're, you're like a toddler savant. And I was like, ha ha ha. And I took it down. I folded it up and I threw it in the closet, but the trees kept pouring out trees, trees. Now the show I was doing was based out of Phoenix, Arizona. So not a lot of trees, 
we had spent 30 years in Los Angeles, you know, yeah, there's some trees, um, but not a lot of trees. And I had no idea what was happening. And the trees kept pouring and I would just take copy, uh, copy machine paper and I'd put it in, and I just, they just keep pouring out. I'm like, what the hell is happening to me? And then I'd look and I'd be like, oh, hi, who are you? And I'd hear a name and I'd be like, oh, hi, Cheryl, what's happening? And this was just me kind of checking out. Like I couldn't take the stress anymore. And so I unceremoniously got fired from that show. Um, thank God. Um, but it was really because I stood up and said, this is happening. This is not acceptable. I am not being listened to. Um, and this is just not an acceptable situation. And so the narcissist fired me, which was fine. Um, television happens all the time, right? So I'm like, oh, okay. But the trees kept pouring out. And at the same time, my husband and I just decided with these trees, we're, it, it, there's a lot more to the story than that because I said, no, I'm, I, I'm not an artist. I can't do this. But he's like, we're, we need to do this. We need to go and start a business. He was an entrepreneur in LA. So that was always his thing. And um, my friend at work bought me treesheavefeelings.com. And I thought it was just a joke. I was like, oh, you just wasted $12.99 on Google domains. And, and I thought it was a joke. And she's like, no, you need to go and do something with this, with your trees. And she's a huge tree hugger, huge, huge, huge tree hugger. And um, shout out to Abby. Thank you. Cause we've now trademarked that name. Um, so, cause all my trees, I would write their little story. Like Cheryl, sometimes Cheryl was the tree. Oh, Hey Cheryl, what's your, Oh, what's happening? Sometimes Cheryl loved so hard. It made her cry. And it was a, it was a sad tree. And obviously these were, this was me channeling my grief and anger and pain and sadness and loss and triggered. I'd been re super triggered and, bleh. and um, so then I said, well, I can't, I'm not an artist. I can't do this. I won't do this. And then another friend um, said, well, if you're not going to start the website, I will. And then she went off and started, I'm like, now I hate everybody. I hate all of you. I'm not an artist. I can't do this. I won't do this. And what I now know reflecting back is that the trees had come like a whoosh to me. Mm -hmm. And I thought tapping into old anxiety issues and abandonment issues, I thought, well, they're going to leave me as fast as they arrived. Mm. And so how am I going to pour my life into creating an art business when number one, I'm not an artist. I'm not an artist. And I was definitive about that, that it wouldn't work. Nobody would care about my stupid trees. Nobody would care about my stupid sayings because I'm not an artist, but everyone else around me believed in me. And um, things started happening really fast. Like my husband's like, no, we're doing this. And we same year. So I think March, 2019 is when I got fired. Um, and we stayed in Phoenix until our lease ran out. Um, until uh, November of 2019, and we left our, we sold our house in Los Angeles, and um, 2019, we followed the trees to Washington State, and now I'm looking out the window at all these beautiful trees, and now I'm a tree hugger, but I wasn't, I, like, I was a city girl, I was too busy to notice any trees, you know, it's like, oh, hey, you're cute, you know, whatever, I didn't, I had that that I'm too busy mindset for all of these, the beauty in life. And so anyway, so then COVID hit, of course, as we all know, and um, I just kept drawing and my husband started, you know, building stuff, the business kind of from the inside. And, and now it's my full-time world. And, and as I was doodling and playing another a, a raven emerged a big bright colorful raven and I'm like oh, oh my god who are you what the hell am I supposed to do with you mm -hmm. and it's like I heard Ravina and now also at the same time I'm thinking I'm not that person that like hears things and I, I I just like I kept pushing like no this is not me and I'm like oh Ravina hey what's your story and it became, uh, I just heard immediately, Ravina, the all wrong Raven. And I'm like, go, mm -hmm. oh, okay, now what? And her story, it's just, they kind of just download as I'm usually while I'm sleeping, but everything I do now has a story. And 
Ravina's story was and is about her being a bright, colorful raven. She has a crown. Um, I don't have her behind me, dang it. Um, but she uh, she has a, a, a big heart, a kind heart, and she has lots of big feelings. And she is unwelcome in the dark forest of Nevermore. Mm -hmm. And so it actually ended up becoming an autobiographical tale of me, my experiences in television and in Hollywood and as a woman and um, yet told through a colorful raven. So it's for kids and adults. But really the, the what, what I've experienced now is how art and language together is far more than the sum of its parts and that I just turned 60 uh three weeks ago no and now and now it's like all of this discovery about life is coming and it's this is the first time in my life and I say my age because a I think it's important for women to say their age and not hide you know but also because none of this was available to me until I was old enough to express it in this way. And the only art that I had really done, um, with the exception of writing, um, had been in therapy with art therapy mm -hmm. to um, work through the darkness of my past as a child. And when I did art therapy, it was all collage and I became like obsessed with it. Like it really was transformative for me, but I didn't have to, all I had to do was tear and cut and paste and then stand back and see a scene emerge. And it was really healing for me. And it was very dark and I loved it. I loved it because the darkness made me feel things I needed to feel. And now I couldn't understand all this bright and colorful these trees and they're happy and some are sad and some, and then Ravina bright and bold and colorful, but she has Raven nature. And so even though she has a big heart um, and lots of feelings, it doesn't mean that she's weak. So when, just because we're kind does not mean we're weak. And I couldn't have had all this come to me when I was 20 or 30 or 40 or even 50. Right. And so it's been this wild, scary journey because it's not like this is a little retirement fun. I'm not anywhere near retiring. Mm -hmm. um, we started all over again mm -hmm. in something that I didn't, I didn't think I knew any, and I still don't. It's weird. Does that make sense? Like it's like this, it's so new yet. It's also so intuitive. I learned there's a term for it called intuitive drawing. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I can't will myself to draw a tree. They, I have to wait. I have to wait yeah. for them to arrive. It's like, but I'm late for Christmas already. It's September. <laughs> I, I'm late. Mm -hmm. I'm late. We got, we got shit to do here. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole new thing. And my husband and I, our learning curve has been like this. We do it full time mm -hmm. together. And yeah, he's out literally right now at a, um, at a farmer's market in Snohomish, Washington on his own, you know, so that I can get other things done and talk to you, but I need to get yeah. other things done. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I hope that gives you kind of the capsule of Oh, yes, yes, it does. I mean, there's so many places I can go from there. First of all, what is so powerful to me, I mean, everything is really powerful, but the most powerful, powerful thing that you talked about is the fact that you weren't like, this wasn't something you were looking for. <laughs> like it literally came to you and you were resisting it. Yes. I mean, there's such a power in the divine things that happen like for us. That it's just like that mind blowing emoji, you know, yeah. now <laughs> with the head that's exploding. yeah, with yeah. the head like, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really appreciate that you shared how, you know, you weren't ready for what you were going to be receiving because you're literally just receiving, you're downloading 
that's what it sounds like to me. It's like you're downloading and you were talking about how you weren't ready. And I think about all of the artists that are trying so hard to pursue, right? Certain things that they believe they love or certain things they think they matter that they think they should have thinking that they're ready when really Mm. they're not. And so, um, you know, at what point, because you talked about you were doing art therapy, mm-hmm. like how, how, how old were you when you were doing that? Oh, when I was doing, I oh, God, I was probably, uh, 45, like, you know, later in like I, because I was just, um, because of, uh, do you talk about trauma stuff on here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just from, from sexual abuse and rape as a child and teen, um, the darkness was still so deeply embedded. And while I was, a, a, a privileged, um, to have, a really good, uh, therapy and psychiatrists, and I had a lot that I just couldn't process. And so when I started doing the art therapy, that's when that helped release the the inside stuff through really beautiful things that I loved doing and so that was 45 yeah 45 and up yeah um thank you for sharing that and for being vulnerable um yeah I'm totally open about it because it's what I've learned with the trees teach me stuff (laughs) every day and every week because I take we go out you know with Ravina the raven and with all the trees we were somewhere every weekend and you know the beauty is is that I get to see that of course I know this intellectually I'm not alone but th- it's healing you know we all need each other we need to talk we need to be open we need to talk about ourselves we need to talk about money we need to talk about uh, trauma. We need to talk about privilege. All these things that we need to talk about. I'm just happy that I can comfortably actually share my story. And and I because I never could have seen any of this coming. No matter how. And I was a producer. The the nature of the the job of a producer is to plan for everything, everything that can blow up, everything that could go wrong, everything that you know. And um, I didn't see this coming at all. I had no idea. So the rage that you were experiencing, it was, was it a combination of what you were experiencing at work coupled with the trauma and the things that you had just experienced in life? Yeah. 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 So the stuff I was dealing with at work was, um, uh, it was really dark and what was so triggering for me was that I wasn't being uh taken seriously Mm -hmm. and I wasn't being taken seriously I wasn't heard um the uh I have to be careful what I say um because of jingle shit um but that I was screaming in the desert basically about bad things that were happening and I was Mm -hmm. and I was the boss so but these are the and uh the people who were uh doing the things that were just grossly inappropriate were protected Mm -hmm. and so that I had to be in therapy through this whole thing to okay that is triggering oh yeah when I was silenced as a kid Mm -hmm. I was silenced the perpetrator was protected. I was silenced. Um, you know, that that's, we know that, that that's how it works and that was replaying. And so that's what was making me really just get physically sick and emotionally sick. And so I was even doing my collage, um, down when I was doing that show, I did a lot of collage. I mean, just like trying to get through that, that, um, grief and anger, anger, actually anger at that point. It's like, I'm a 55 year old woman. Mm-hmm. I am smart. You've hired me to do a job. I've done this for a very long time. I've had a really successful career and now you're choosing to protect. Mm. Yeah. 
Mm, so it was unsafe, it was, mm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then when the trees came and they were all bright and colorful and all this stuff, I was like, this doesn't make a damn bit of sense. Not a damn bit of sense. <laughs> and it took somebody, um, did you ever do clubhouse during like COVID clubhouse became a big thing, the social media where yeah. we could all talk to each other, even though we're, you know, stuck in our houses. Anyway, was that like an know, iPhone? Was that like an iPhone thing? Oh, that's why yeah. I didn't do it. I think I heard about it, but I don't have. Yeah. Idea. Android. <laughs> they didn't do Android for a long time. I'm a droid girl. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't get to play in that party. So, um, but I met a lot of artists um, during COVID when I was trying to, I was grappling with this thing that I'm not an artist and I can't do this. And somebody who I met who's become a friend said to me, I explained about my dark collage work. Mm -hmm. And now I have these colorful trees and the raven. What is happening? And I said, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with with this. And sh if I'm going to go sell something, shouldn't it be the art I feel safest with like my collage work? Like, and, and we talked that through. And then he said, I think the way for you, you might frame this is that this is your album and you have an A side and a B side of your album. Mm -hmm. And that for whatever reason, really connected it, like all the neural pathways in my brain went, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Like, oh, that was the dark part. This is the light part. This is where I've internalized so much my whole life to just survive that now this is my open, outward, joyful expression of who I, not who I really am, because I really am that person too, but this is the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily come until you're older. And I had gone back to school in my forties, I'd gone back to school because I knew television was just getting to kill me. Or, you know, once you're in your forties, you're just too old for TV and as a woman. And, um, I went back to school to get my master's in education so that I could teach. And okay. so, because that was the only thing I could see in my future. And here I am in Washington, drawing trees and ravens and writing a children's book. I, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> so the conversation about the A side and the B side, would you say mm -hmm. that was the one thing that basically like freed you up to be like, I'm going to move forward with these trees? Yeah. That or was it something else? Couple, no, it was that because then it just, it just cleared everything for me. Like you don't have to do this or that, but maybe if you look at it, and see it as these are both of you have you're an album and you've got both sides that coupled with um elizabeth gilbert's big magic have you ever read the book big magic mm -mm. no that was those two things so elizabeth gilbert she wrote eat pray love um okay. i wasn't a huge i wasn't a huge fan I've, of that i've book. read that one though okay yeah <laughs> and um i mean it was like it was like okay yeah it's it you know it's a sweet story um you know, you went through pain. Now you're fine. Okay. So, but then <laughs> her book, Big Magic, I got it on audiobook, And that was that I have listened to it 10 times. I was listening to Elizabeth Gilbert today on another podcast. And because the way that she explains creativity and the magic of creativity is that we all are creative. I can't tell you the number of people that I meet out with when I'm doing, you know, art shows and stuff. They're like, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And it's like, no, you do. Mm -hmm. You do. You just had it taught out of you. You had a job to do, kids to feed that, to, you know, once you've got we are all creative. That's part of the human spirit that we are creative. If we're curious about something, then we are creative and creativity comes out in all kinds of ways. Just doing this podcast is creative. You're curious. And so what she really, the, the, the section of this, of big magic that really changed everything for me is she was talking about um, how, when creativity comes, if you don't say yes to it, it will pass on to someone else. It will move on. And 
she talks about um, another author, Ann Patchett. Yeah, Patchett, um, super famous author. I didn't, I had never read her at that time, but now I have. Um, but th they were friends, and um, there was a whole story in the book about how Elizabeth Gilbert was writing this book, and then she kind of just let it go, just let it go. But at the same time, then Anne Patchett was writing the same book, so it had left Elizabeth Gilbert and gone to Anne Patchett. Mm -hmm. who then, it, but without them knowing. Mm -hmm. And so just this weird stuff. And then I thought, she also described how a poet that she knew that was an elderly poet, that she would be walking or, and, she, and a poem would come through. And if she didn't say yes quickly enough, she would grab it by the tail <laughs> and pull it back, even backwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she would write the poem. And that is exactly how the trees have been. Because I kept saying no to them. And I said no to Ravina too, the raven. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. And her story just kept pouring out. And so the trees and, and all of these things that kept coming through me and I'm fighting them actively no crying like throwing a fit you know I can't I mm. won't I can't I won't you pick somebody else go to somebody relentless they kept pouring out I have hundreds and I have hundreds and hundreds of trees and I and it's like I went to the trees the trees found me first and now I went to the <laughs> trees and I'm like okay who are you let's learn about real trees so, so that's what, what solidified that's what solidified it. Okay. So well, what was the fear? Cause there must've been a fear there also, you know, in terms of the not I, wanting the trees, like, d are you able to articulate what that fear was? Oh yeah. That number one, that they would go away. And number two, that nobody is going to care about these trees because I'm not an artist. So I slapped my own negative, um, my own negativity about myself onto the top of them and said there are plenty of artists out there that are doing trees mine mine suck they're not real trees I can't draw a real tree and I'm not I'm that's not hyper hyperbole or hyperbolic whatever I, I can't draw a real tree people are like can you draw the maple in my front yard I'm like first of all I couldn't identify a maple if it fell on my head number two <laughs> I can't draw a real tree. Do you think I know perspective? Like, I don't know anything about perspective. I can't make something like the, no, no. So that, the, that scared me. And also then, because we were pushing all of our chips into this, I have a real scarcity issue surrounding money. Like I'm terrified mm. of not having money. And this is what I'm dealing with in therapy now, you know, is having to go all the way back on where this scarcity mindset comes from. I'm very much, you know, in, in television, I could make really great money. And then I could have no money for a very long time because there's no show there, you know, you know there's no gig, whatever. Or for all, you know, friends, writers guild right now, there's, you know, strike. And so it's feast and famine. And, and so I lived my entire career in feast and famine. And all I saw with art was famine, mm. famine. We will die. We will die. We will die. And I still, I mean, I'm, it's, it's, it's scary as hell. And people think, oh, well, you sold your house in LA. So, you know, you, you, you know, you're just, you have to, no. No, it wasn't like that. We were just trying to survive in LA. Now it's like, now we're starting a business and I'm, I have to be, non, number one, I have to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Literally, like I have to be out with people. <laughs> and I was afraid that people would walk by my art. And I'm like, the last thing I'm going to do is stand in a tent. Well, didn't I meet you standing in a tent? Yes. And you were mm -hmm. looking so good in your overalls. I was like, and I loved all the trees. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this tent. <laughs> and then people like you show up with joy and smiles and you look at, and then my heart is like, oh God, it matters. It matters. This matters. This matters. But really it's only you guys showing up because otherwise there's a, 
a pattern I, I now recognize that I go through on the weekends, you know, I'm jazzed because I'm meeting people and stuff. And I can see that it matters. Okay, what I'm doing matters. And this that I'm giving language to feelings and things that people might not otherwise have. Okay. And then I come home and then by Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm spinning again. I'm panicked. We're going to die. Um, I'm going to be obsolete tomorrow. Nobody's going to like, it's, it, it's a lot of, it's truly a lot of work in therapy and um, trying to get through, like right now we're doing the Kickstarter for Ravina the All Wrong Raven and people are giving money and I have a hard time with that. And my brain goes into, I'm not worthy. Um, they don't know I'm really not an artist. Um, wait till they, find, you know, it's, it's the classic imposter syndrome crap, which I did not have in television that, you know, it was like, I knew I was good. I'd go get jobs. I'd do a great job. Um, this is a whole different level of insecurity mm -hmm. and, and fear. And also, cause everything is new for me. Like everything we do is new. There's not, there's no comfort zone other than writing. So when I write the stories for the trees, like everybody's you know every tree has their story like yeah. Cheryl right that's a that's my that's my comfort zone mm -hmm. but the rest is is really really hard for me and also having to do social media and all that <laughs> yeah I feel like I'm about social media. um had the word that was coming up for me while I was listening to you was you know it's just it's so unfamiliar the, this new space with the trees. It's like, it's so yeah. unfamiliar for you. And I'm listening to you and I, it's, I hear so many stories of artists that, you know, they've got this self narrative that just won't stop. That is contrary to the truth that just mm -hmm. keeps speaking into like what, what they can't do how it's not an, you know, like all of those things, almost like sabotage. Mm -hmm. Oh, pure and sabotage. Yeah, pure sabotage. And, you mm -hmm. know, I was going to ask you earlier, like, you know, how was it that you were able to be so successful, like in your career, you know, prior to the trees, like in spite of the trauma. But I think there's, there's, there's a confidence that comes from obtaining like knowledge knowledge and information, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I think when we're creative and something just is innate within us and it's natural, we don't want to, we don't want to tell ourselves how great and amazing that is because it's like, we didn't have to really work for that. It just, it just was there. Oh, that's such a, such a great observation. That's really interesting. Yeah. Because it's just me that that's just there. It's just me. And in, in television, number one, I was, I went into television so that my dad would um, really love me and my biological father who was in the industry. I got in for nepot through nepotism, survived on my own after that. But, um, you know, and so for that, it was a veneer. I could just put a veneer on, put on, mm -hmm. I'm five foot two and a quarter put on some tall boots, you know, <laughs> and, and I, and I, and I'm, I am strong, you know, I'm a, I have a, I have confidence in, in that. And like you said, knowledge, I knew how to do it. I was trained very well by some of the best people in the biz. I knew how to do stuff and I was really good at, and I'd always be surrounded by a team, right? So I'd either be a part of the team when I was starting out or for the first, you know, decade or so. And then you become, you ro rise up, it to the to the top and then you, but you're still surrounded by a team of creatives right and together we do great stuff can't do it yeah. by yourself and um now I'm by myself I mean of course yes I have my husband who runs the whole thing but what you said yes this is just something that is just me which means I'm just naked standing here and and now I the heart and I know this is hard for artists too and now I need you to pay me <laughs> to buy my art, which I'd really rather just give to you. It's also, a, 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 I think, a female thing, a, a feminine thing, we'll say, a very feminine, um, you know, oh, gosh, I don't want you to pay for this here. Just, you know, just take it, yeah. you know, or we undervalue ourselves. Like I, I would undervalue myself. I would give stuff away. My husband would be like, oh, God, 
<laughs> how do we break her of this? Right. And, and then another artist friend said, raise your prices. I'm like, oh, I'm not worth anything, let alone more. Mm -hmm. And then I now tell artists, raise your prices. I know how hard this is. I know what we do to create. I know what we do to get our stuff out there. Raise your prices. Mm -hmm. And there's that whole psychology of it too. Because when you do, you sell more. It's a crazy thing. I don't, I don't really understand it, but the psychology of it all, but it's, you know, it's not like we're all trying to just get rich out there. It's like, we just want you to appreciate and enjoy our art and pay us uh, a fair. And I find that people are so willing, like people mm -hmm. donating to my Kickstarter. I feel guilty. Like, Oh God, I should, you know, oh, uh, uh. I am so sick of feeling this way and you know that I'm not worthy of this because I'm not an artist it's like I have to stop and I'm actively working on that I am actively working on that I heard um who was it I listened to a I'm a podcast freak so I listen to lots of podcasts um and I listen to Glennon Doyle um we can do hard things and there was a whole section that they were talking, there a whole subject that they were talking about, like being, you know, your your wise, secure self, basically. Elder self, sitting, I'm already my elder self, but elder, more elder, um, sitting at the head <laughs> of this, at this table, right? And and then you have all of your little insecure pieces of yourself. You're, oh, the sky is falling, we're going to be poor. Oh, I'm traumatized, don't trigger me. Oh, I can't ask for money, I have shame around money, right? And what does the wise part of you that is stable and secure say, okay, Tracy, the sky isn't falling. It's actually never fallen. There's a lot of shit that's happened, but the sky is never actually falling. So everything's okay. You know, but doing that kind of exercise of mm -hmm. I'm not worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You, you, you have talent, you have gifts. It's okay to say you have talent and you have gifts like, oh, you know, no, I can't. I have to be humble. You need to be mm -hmm. humble, you know, but of, of just trying to see that there are these pieces of you sitting at this big table, but the grown up, that's something I think we are going to, we, our whole life, we're going to struggle with this, right? Of Because we're human, but finding that place where you can help mentor the other pieces of yourself. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the work is critical. I mean, and that's one thing that we really engaging in terms of our organization is like helping younger artists learn the importance of doing the work, recognizing they need to do the work and, sh and, and showing them how to do it because mm -hmm. like it has to be done in order to continue growing and it doesn't stop. It like, it's not like, it doesn't stop at a certain age. Like it continues as long as you want to continue growing deepening your roots, you know what I mean? Like having a more yeah. fulfilling quality of life. Yeah. And you, and what I'm also learning now is to don't get stuck in your way of this is the type of art that I do, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is what I do because even I thought that the trees were just going to be the trees. And then the Raven shows up never in my plan of my life was a children's book there. It just wasn't. And it's the, you know, it's the constant pivot, right? So it's like, well, here we have a raven. And so of course she's part of the forest. Now she's just queen of the forest, but it is constantly being open to pivoting mm. and saying, you know, I am many things. Mm -hmm. I am, I am a, I'm a tree artist. Yes. And Yes, now I'm a children's book author. Oh, and you know, the weirdest thing. So this what? is part of, part of my mental ugh, with all of this is that to do the children's book, people are like, oh, you're, you're illustrating it. It's like, no, I had to hire a co-illustrator <laughs> because, and that's not even a thing. I kept Googling like co-illustrator. It's like, if you could illustrate, you illustrate. It's like, uh, no, I can only draw when it comes <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> And I can't draw all the things that I can write. And so yeah. why am I going to try to write to what I can draw? 
when I could just write a really great story because that's my my full jam. And I have I've hired a co-illustrator and I in like my Kickstarter, it's like and meet my co-illustrator because I didn't know how to make my raven fly. I know how she appeared perched mm -hmm. on her on her branch. I don't know how to make her go like this. I don't, I'm, I don't. And people are like, you can do it. I'm like, I was like, <laughs> shut up. Like, it, no, no, I actually, I can't. And it's not because I'm, I'm, I can't yet. I'll say I can't yet, but I don't have to. I can have somebody do it with me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. have to do this by myself when I can have somebody do it with me. So I have a co-illustrator making my own rules. Making your own. That's right. You are a pioneer woman. And someone needed to hear that because it. that's so freeing. I mean, how many times yeah. do we get stuck because we feel like we need to be able to do everything? Can't and it's like, it. no, why not? And, and sometimes we can just choose. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to have someone else do it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no and, shame in that. And I, it's like, well, if somebody's, yeah, somebody's like, I've never heard of that. I'm like, I hadn't either. Yeah. And here we are. And now mm -hmm. I get to pay, you know, I got to raise money, but that's why I got to raise money. But yeah. Yeah. You're she's on the cover of money. the book. She's on the mm -hmm. cover of the book with me. She makes her fly. She makes the characters. I, I look at it a little what you can draw. And I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Make your own rules. Make your own rules. You know, what's so cool. Okay. So I have been reading this book called called to create and yeah. hopefully I don't I get my pen. Called hopefully I don't get the, the person wrong, but I believe it's the guy, I'm not going to remember his name, but the one that came up with like the whole Narnia series. C.S. Lewis. Yes. Thank you. Was that C.S. Lewis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. And so I, just I don't know if you knew this, but like same thing for him. Like he would, he kept seeing these pictures like a dream and he mm -hmm. had no idea what they went, no idea what they meant. Kept having them like, I don't know how many years by, and then these books came. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's like crazy cool, it. you know, it's, it's like the things that we see, we don't know when they will actually come about or what they exactly yeah. mean but it's like just hold on to it you never know yeah and because what I said about the book big magic right when it comes if you catch it by its tail pull yeah. it back and and work with it and that's fascinating okay call to create that sounds amazing yeah I oh and, my gosh I love that book and and that's the that's the thing is that I think too, because of social media, you know, the blessing and the curse, but we all get to, now we get to talk to each other. We get to be open. I found another woman who is a, a, now a dear friend because I was on her podcast and we've become dear friends. And, you know, she and I talk openly about money and our, our money fears, you know, in my profession, my previous life, you had to always act like you had tons of money. You had to have a nice car. You had to, right? Or else you looked unemployable. Like if you're yeah. an executive producer or you're a director or you're whatever, whatever, you got to play the part. It's yeah, like, I grew up in that. Mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. and now it's like being able to be open and honest and say, yeah, I don't know how to do this. So I hired someone. And yeah, we don't have to do everything. And artists, you know, even for going out to the art festivals and the farmers markets and things, I'm much more of an introvert than an extrovert. Mm -hmm. I have a lot more extroversion than most artists. I will, I will, it, uh, it's so counterintuitive for artists to want to go out and like, hey, hi, talk to people. They just don't, like, I'd just rather be home doing my art. So there are so many things that we as artists have to then try to get past the social media stuff, the being out in front, the selling, the accepting money for our gift. And then calling it a gift even is like, yeah, just it's a lot to, it, it's like a whole new outfit to put on. I love that imagery. Love that imagery. It's a whole new outfit yeah. to put on.
I think some of the most effective artists are the ones that have really stepped into that new outfit in terms of just an acceptance, you know, like I'm always, again, mind blown emo emoji. <laughs> it's like every, every time you kind of think like, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure of myself. I'm, I'm pretty confident. Like I, I accept myself. I'm not overly um, concerned with how people see me or, you know, and then something happens and you're a little shook at like, wow, actually I'm not really as firm as I thought I was. <laughs> and I feel yeah. like I should be further oh. along because I've lived so many years here. <laughs> yeah. The insecurities, they like pop out of your arm. Literally, you're like, what is happening? I thought I've been on this planet a long time and, and I should have this down. And then I'm just find myself, you know, falling apart at the seams, yeah. sobbing, right? Like, but I think what I am learning is that this is, um, this is the human experience and we all have creativity. And even if it is being creative, like I love it when young people come into the booth and that is the beautiful thing about being out in with the public is that young and old, but when young people come into the booth and every kid I ask, every single kid I ask, I don't even ask. I just say, oh gosh, you're an artist, aren't you? <laughs> and they're like, mm-hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. at some point that goes away and it's because mm -hmm. of society and, and, and the constriction. And, but it's like the beauty I can say about my drawing, you know, this, I know it's much bigger, but my, my rage being able to explain this to little kids, like even, you know, five years old, when, if you're mad, you know, get a, get some, uh, a pen, a Sharpie, something, and just go crazy. And then look at cool stuff, right? Look what can yeah. happen. So even if it's just on the side or at work, when you're really stressed out, just to be able to write or draw or do something, um, I didn't know that this would become my entire life never ever ever saw any of this coming but I did say yes and that is the that's the key I did say yes that was the, the hardest yes ever and um but you have to say yes in whatever way it doesn't mean it has to be your whole it has to be your whole career um doesn't mean you have to do it right now um doesn't mean you have to show it in public doesn't mean anything but just say yes when that creativity comes you say yes and magic happens it's amazing exactly what I was saying that was brewing amazing I was like amazing <laughs> and then people like you come in and I'm like who are you a little bright and shiny human you, you know, came in I was I knew I I knew I loved you the second I saw you I'm like who are you Thank you. The feeling was mutual, is mutual. And you know, I have a funny feeling that it, it's only getting better for you, Miss Joyce. It's only getting better. You're just scratching the surface. Uh -huh. I can't wait. I can't wait to see. So as you know, we're going to begin to kind of wrap up. <laughs> but um, I was going to ask, like, what's next for you? But I think what's next, what's next would be Ravina the Raven, right? Mm hmm. So right now, um, I am uh, right now I am I'm late for Christmas, which is so crazy, like oh, the whole retail world knew. Um, but so Christmas season, but at the same time, the most important thing for me is doing this, this book for being you know, the all wrong Raven and um, getting that done and published and getting it out there. Because mm -hmm. she has a fan club, That's and I so think cute. And I, it's so freaking cute. And <laughs> um, then I see now in the middle of the night, I wake up and I write in my you know text myself or whatever in my notes. Um, because I see now a whole series of books for her. Like I'm because I'm now open to the possibility that we don't know what life brings, and it's just one day at a time and we see and if that I can't write the end of my story mm. you know and 
that because I just, if I keep saying yes, what will happen next? So in my perfect world, I would have um, my own shop and with my series of books, Ravina the All Wrong Raven does this and that and this and that, where she has adventures and she, and she, but she has a kind heart and Raven spirit. And I would have my trees and a little coffee shop in there. So I don't even drink coffee, but it sounds very, very sexy. I have a coffee shop in there. And, and um, yeah, I don't, I, I just want to be able to grow this into a way that my husband and I can have a creative uh, life mm -hmm. with um, a little adrenaline because I still am, am an adrenaline junkie. So it's <laughs> like, what's next? What's next? But that would be my, okay. I'll be a children's book author and artiste. Love it. Love, love, love it. So I get your emails, which love, love the emails. How can someone else that's listening, you know, jump, jump in to be part of your email list so they get the information? Um, everything is trees have everything is trees have feelings. So um, it's Tracy at trees have feelings. It's trees have feelings on Instagram. No underscores. No nothing. Trees have feelings on Instagram. Trees have feelings on Facebook. And oh my God, I'm trying to do TikTok, which is the bane of my existence. But a, a marketing consultant friend of mine is like, you have to do this, and I'm like, but I hate it. But I'm trying. So anyway, trees have feelings everywhere, and my website is treeshavefeelings.com. Okay, trees have feelings. You guys need to go there. Yeah, me and TikTok didn't get along. I couldn't figure it out and I took it off my phone. Oh. Um, and dare I say that I think you have a project already brewing. No pressure. And I think what? it's I'm too late for Christmas. What? I think it's I'm too late for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Whenever it comes out. <laughs> Chew on it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, oh, I gotta write that down. I'm write that down. Me. I mean, you've said it a couple times. I'm like, yeah. I think that's her. I think that's a project oh. in her. I don't know when it's gonna come out, but it's oh it's gonna God. be late, but it's gonna actually be right on time. Oh. How about that? Oh, hey. oh, oh my God. <laughs> Late, but right on time. Yes. Put it in there. All I right. So, so Tracy, I thank you so much again for again saying yes to this. Um, yes. Yeah. We are finishing up season two soon, which I'm excited about. And then we're going to do some fun new things for season three. So I'm going to hit you up again when we do season three. I hope three. so. I and, hope so. You know, yeah. And, you know, we'll be in person that time. This next Yes. Time. Yes. <laughs> well, you rock. You're awesome. I'm so glad you walked into my life that day at Lavender Festival, right? Yes. Or, in swim yes. with all the trees. In swim. Yeah. All the, all the trees and all the lavender. <sighs> what a treat. Thank you. What? I'm honored. Yes. Thank you. All right. So let me just say, you guys, you have been listening again to For the Artists. Um, we have had Tracy on today. Go to Trees Have feelings.com to find out more information but until next week you already know what i'm going to tell you and that is to keep creating bye